that going. The recording. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indie Podcast. My name is Eugene Driscoll of ValleyIndie.com. Or I want to do a quick podcast, a blogcast, before the storm comes uh, rolling in. It's 3.15, Thursday, July 8th. I don't know. We may be washed away by July 9th, the way the skies are looking right now. But this morning in Ansonia, there was a press conference at 10.30 a.m. where Governor Lamont came to town for the second time uh, in, in ex- almost exactly a year. Pandemic has warped time. But uh, he returned to Ansonia this morning to talk about a $1 million grant the city is receiving from the department, uh, from the Brownfield program of Department of uh, Economic Development, DECD, Department of Economic and Community Development. So I wanted to play the press conference and maybe do like a a little video or a little uh, photo montage uh, as you watch. But before I do that, a couple of notes of uh, housekeeping there. I just wanted to thank everybody for the many uh, text messages, emails, hundreds of Facebook comments from readers of the Valley Indy uh, expressing their condolences to me on the passing of my mother, Therese Driscoll, uh, last month. It, uh, it helped. It meant a lot. I read some of the entries uh, to my, uh, my father uh, and also you know some of the uh, local uh, newsmakers or politicians who commented publicly that that was great fodder for conversation between some of my uh, more insane older brothers. I'm the youngest of five boys. So anyway, thank you everybody uh, for all your support. I, I really do appreciate it. I just also wanted to say uh, the Fab Four Music Festival, I have to read this, I'm not gonna pretend like I don't have it right in front of me. It's a Beatles themed Fab Four Music Festival. It's scheduled for Saturday, July 10th at Nolan Field, 350 Wakeley Avenue. That's coming up uh, this weekend. So go to www.fab, the number four, musicfestival.com, or even easier, go to valleyindy.org, look under Extra Extra if you wanna buy tickets. It's about uh, 20 bucks in advance. $25 $25 at the door. It's Saturday, July 10th, 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, there's a ton of information uh, on the Valley Indy. I meant to get Charles Rosnay in here. Sorry if I just butchered your last name on a podcast, but it's just been busy and I had to cancel. So I apologize for that. Also, I feel personally responsible for the cancellation of the Derby Shelton fireworks uh, twice. I mean, technically, I guess they're postponements, but they haven't given a new date yet. It seems that every time I put something on the site or on Facebook saying, hey, the fireworks are tomorrow, like 10 minutes after they are canceled. So sorry about that world. It's my bad karma, my bad juju. But there are fireworks, at least as of right now, scheduled for Sunday, July 11th in Ansonia. Uh, governments in Ansonia and Seymour are teaming up this year to launch fireworks on the top of Fountain Lake in Ansonia. That's very close to the Seymour border. It's going to happen after dark Sunday, July 11th. It's a little uh, informal. This is the first time the towns have done this. So in terms of viewing areas, uh, there's been suggestions. Tritown Plaza has been mentioned many times by Anne-Marie Dragonis, the first selectman woman of uh, Seymour. The former Big Y Shopping Center has been thrown out as a, as a suggestion. But listen, if you show up and somebody says you can't park there, please don't blame me. Uh, that's in Ansonia, the former Big Y there. Seymour Community Center parking lot, uh, 70 Pine Street up there in Seymour. Nolan Field in Ansonia is another one. And Simpson Church, that parking lot, North Cliff Street in Ansonia. I'll also tell you, just as somebody who used to work for many years, a decade uh, at, on Main Street in Ansonia, at the train station there, I could see at least the new Farrell building from there. So I would think West Main Street might be a possibility. Uh, I don't know if the commuter lot, but at least the train station. Again, I was up three floors, but I think you'll probably be able to see him from a bunch of spots in Ansonia. North Main Street, too, like uh, around uh, where like the Domino's is and all that. That should be a, a, a good view of the fireworks. So, okay, so that's that. So back to the very subject of this podcast, and I know this is going to get me in trouble. Oh, wait, where do I have it? I have, oh, I didn't publish the story yet. So uh, Connecticut's governor, that's Ned Lamont, and a cadre, cadre, cadre of elected, see, I, I can't even read what I write. A cadre of elected officials were in the city Thursday, that's today, July 8th, to celebrate the city receiving $1 million from the state to go toward the environmental assessment, demolition, and remediation, that's environmental remediation, of the formal Farrell Foundry and Machine Company site at the corner of Main Street and North Main Street in Ansonia. Uh, this is a big deal for Ansonia. 
you cannot doubt the fact that Main Street and Sonia is on the rise. And I'm going to play the press conference and hopefully you'll see some images because I, I walked around and Sony and just took pictures after the press conference. So, uh, I mean, one thing about Aunt Sonia, sometimes the there's like political operatives, everything can become political in Aunt Sonia, like who gets credit for for this grant. Uh, and I'm Pollyanna, but I assume this is this is really a bipartisan team effort. You know, I'd hate to see people trying to sort of elbow each other in, in the name of politics. But, you know, it, it's a grant, right? So the grant writer, Sheila O'Malley, she uh, wrote the grant from what I understand. Then you've got uh, State Rep Rochelle, State Senator Cabrera. Uh, I know, I hear stuff, they're lobbying uh, for Ansonia on the state level. I assume they gathered support. I mean, I don't get an inside look exactly as how, how the sausage is made, but, uh, I think the important thing is that, that this grant is here and Ansonia is going to be able to hopefully clean up, uh, remediate, demolish, and get something in, which is a you know an area that I know it has a lot of history locally. It employed so many people, families, generations, but man, it looks like a big hulking dump of nothingness there. It looks like an albatross. It looks like a void when you walk into the area of the former Farrell foundry and then going back into that 50 acre uh, Ansonia copper and brass. But little by little, these steps are important. And I hope it's a day to, to celebrate bipartisanship, everybody working towards the goal of getting it cleaned up. Uh, like Nicole Clarity's teacher state rep said, you know, this is, this is good for everybody. It's not just an Ansonia thing. It benefits us all. So there, yeah, I'm all poly on. That's my public service announcement nobody asked for, right? Get off Facebook. Get off Facebook, everybody. Come to the Valley Indie site and I will delete any negative comments like that. But uh, no, on a serious note, I did get into, I lost a friend, I feel like a week ago. I turned off the comments to the mask story in Seymour. And here's the thing I've started to view. Uh, the comment section, Valley Indie Facebook, right? It's uh, whatever, it's facebook.com, Valley Independent Sentinel. I kind of view that as my shop. You know, I work virtually. I don't, that's like my newsroom sort of, I feel like. So I try to maintain a certain level of discourse there. And I just don't think, I just don't have the time to always, nor do I think it's my job to uh, moderate a comment thread that just goes off the rails and it happens so finally after years i mean it's time consuming can you imagine running a business running a hardware store or running whatever a, a drugstore a pharmacy and you have to stop whatever you're doing and mediate this fight as two people are just screaming at each other about something political uh, in your aisle just going at it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Nobody's stopping. Then somebody else joins in and then somebody else says something off color. But meanwhile, you know, you have your work to do. And so in that particular thread, there was one thread that kind of said, well, this is the right, this is the work of crazy right-wing anti-vaxxer Trump people. So that, I mean, that, you know, that was an assumption. And then there was a response to that. And then the third comment was something about vaccines are fake. At that point I had to cut my lawn. I had to, I had a, a list of stories that I had to do. I just made the decision, you know what? I can't sit here and moderate this comment thread. I do think it's my responsibility to, to moderate comments. I don't think anything goes. I don't think that's good for journalism. I don't think it's good for our community. It's not good for the credibility of a online newspaper. So I said, you know what? I've got things to do. And Facebook has given me the option to limit who comments on a particular uh, story. And I did that because I just sensed that was going to be a back and forth, which is, hey, if I was selling a million ads and I could show, oh, look how, look at our engagement on Facebook. And it's just people fighting for 20 minutes with 10,000 page views. I guess that would be good, but that's not the mission of the Valley Indie. We're not, we're a nonprofit with, with a specific mission uh, in the Valley. And it's not just to host a place online where people can bash each other. That was the Valley Indy when we first launched. I launched it in 2009 with the belief pretty much anything goes. So we had fake emails, people could sign up and um, bash each other all day long, but it weighs on your soul. And it started, I, I have gone, done a 180 over the last uh, 11 years. So I know, and you know, a, a person, a friend of mine, you know, made a comparison there. there she felt like I was, uh, taking away her right to free speech. I mean, I'm, I'm, an, I'm, a I'm not a government uh, agency, so 
you know, I literally can't do that. Private organizations aren't subjected to those same rules, but I get what she was saying, because we're a newspaper, an online newspaper, you want to, you know, foster a, a civil conversation, which I don't think that was going to become, and allow for the, uh, the free flowing exchange of ideas, which also all things I believe in. But I mean, we wrote the article, there were sides, if you will, in the article. So I don't think it's, you know, a reporter has to like write the article or an editor has to edit the article and then be locked in a room and just have, just sit there and with your hands tied behind your back as people scream at each other all day. And I think the vast majority of people at this point in the social media uh, game or age or era, you probably sort of agree with me. I know nothing, I could be right. I reserve the, the right to be 100% wrong, but I just wanted to explain that decision to me. To you. So, all right. I realize I've been blabbing on. It's been a long month. <laughs> I will, uh, I will just share with you, like during the great give, that was, uh, that's when I found out my mother had, uh, cancer. She was diagnosed with, uh, two, actually she wasn't even diagnosed. I just got a text message during day two of the great give from my brother, or maybe it was an email. I can't remember. It was like right before I went on with the Assumption Kids and I was having all trouble with my computer. Uh, my brother said my mother has uh, cancer and uh, severe emphysema and there's basically n nothing anybody could do. And that was the great give. Uh, and within less, or well, within about five weeks, she was gone. So that was, uh, that was the last week. This is really the first podcast I've done since then. Although I did an interview with the Ansonia Police Union about some objections to using the new police facility as a senior center. But uh, anyway, that's why I'm, I'm hopped up on, uh, on everything. So now I'll shut up and you can listen to the complete unedited, poor quality uh, audio of a press conference that was held Thursday, July 8th, announcing or celebrating, because the announcement came a while ago when I was off. Uh, I took some time off because my mother died. It wasn't really much of a vacation, you know what I mean? But uh, that's when they announced that the city's receiving $1 million from the state to go toward the environmental assessment, demolition, and remediation of the former Farrell Foundry and Machine Company site at the corner of Main Street and North Main Street in the great city of Ansonia. Thank you. Now I got to turn this off somehow. Huh? Stop the recording. I'd like to welcome everyone to the great city of Ansonia. Thank you for being here. And I want to first thank Governor Lamont for coming back to Ansonia and putting his money where his mouth is. I want to thank Sheila O'Malley, our Economic Development Director and Grants Administrator, our Environmental Consultants, for writing this 110-page grant. This grant took over 18 hours of my staff putting this together for this project. And I, I want to thank them for that. It, it, you know, we had to have skin in the game by taking this property it, 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 of what we did. And now it's up to us to get it finished. I also would like to recognize Senator Gr uh, Cabrera. <laughs> Rep. Rochelle, present. And our alderman, uh, Joe Cassetti from the Third Ward. Alderman uh, Rivers from the 5th Ward, Alderman King from the 1st Ward, which this area encompasses here. I, es I especially want to thank Representative Nicole Clairdis Dietria and First Select Woman Anne Marie Dragonis for their support of my efforts. They recognize that Seymour and the surrounding communities can benefit from the revitalization of this property right here. I also want to thank Binu Chandy from DECD and other staff of DECD for working so well with my staff for over the last seven and a half years. With funding from the state of Connecticut, we have been able to transform former Brownsfield sites into private development, like this parcel here on Main Street, being converted into residential units, the former vacant office building into the state-of-the-art police facility with senior center and community center and identifying and remediating city buildings which will and are now being used for future development. We are grateful to you, Governor Lamont, for recognizing 35 North Main Street as a key brownsfield site and a gateway into Ansonia Copper and Brass. 
piece, which together forms 60 acres of valuable future commercial and industrial space. This grant, along with other state, federal, and Naugatuck Valley Council of Government funding that we have secured will allow us to clean up and demolish the site, which is saturated, situated rather, in 3.5 acres and is poised for redevelopment. We are ready to continue to recharge Ansonia yeah. and pave the way for future growth and prosperity. I am the MC for today's meeting. Um, I would like to, at this time to introduce Representative Kara Rochelle to come to the podium for some words. It is a momentous occasion that we are building on. Just a year ago, we were here to announce the $600,000 in state investment to start the process of knocking this out. And at that time, I described it as a domino tip. And that's truly what it has been. Uh, we are now seeing a million dollar investment uh, to continue to do brownfield remediation and clean up of this area. Uh, the Valley, as many of you know, is an area that was the economic driver for the state of Connecticut in its heyday. We were that hub that had thousands of jobs behind us. These buildings represent thousands of families that were supported. And as they closed, this region fell into hard times. But what we're seeing is that a strong partnership of local and state partners, a state investment can make a difference and will revitalize this community. So I am beyond appreciative of Governor Lamont for seeing our vision and of partnering with us to make it happen. Um, I know over the, the past few years, we've shared with him a lot about our vibrant history, about the uh, Navy propellers that were built in this factory, about the contracts that were put in here, uh, and all the ingenuity. Uh, and now it's time to look forward, to move forward, and to have that partnership. I'm also here to celebrate a bit about the other investments that we've been doing uh, on the state level for communities like Ansonia, uh, and, and, and specifically for our region. So in addition to this million dollar investment, uh, in brownfield cleanup, we're also seeing in this budget the province being made locally in other ways as well. A quarter million dollar investment uh, in partnership with uh, Senator Cabrera and the state uh, in youth programming over the next two years for our residents. Historic levels of education increasing in funding, historic levels of municipal increases in funding. This is going to have a true impact. It means that whatever direction you're turning in, whatever the needs are for our residents, we're meeting those needs historic increases in investing in our nonprofits and our social service agencies. So that as we recover from the pandemic, we can also see that, that, that the residents are getting what they need in our community, the demands are being met. I'm just so appreciative to be in a position to help the representative of Ansonia and to be able to partner uh, so strongly with Senator Cabrera, Governor Lamont, and our local officials to get this work done for our residents and make meaningful progress happen. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to introduce Senator Jorge Cabrera to come to the podium. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you all so much. Thank you for, for being here. I'm so happy to be here on this momentous occasion to celebrate this incredible historic investment in revitalizing this project in, in Sonia. And let me first begin, Governor, by thanking you for your incredible leadership in seeing us through the, the abundance in a century pandemic. Uh, we know that you made some decisions that weren't always popular, but it's a reason why you were able to make those tough calls, get us through this pandemic. That's why Connecticut is a national leader in making sure that we recover, come out and spend it strong. And you being here today, the investment you made together, working with our state delegation, Mayor Cassetti, the alderman here, it takes a team effort uh, to get this done. And I am so proud to be here in support of this project and also to continue the work that Governor Lamont recognizes and the state delegation working together with our uh, leadership up in Hartford as we begin to get out of this pandemic, firing on all cylinders, making record investments in our towns and cities, especially in towns like Sonia, that quite frankly for too long have been uh, looked over and neglected. And uh, Governor Lamont gets it. Uh, that's why we're here today, because he saw that the need was there, working together with our, the mayor and our state delegation to make these critical investments as we pull out of this pandemic in the years ahead. And I'm looking forward to working with him and everyone state and federal and local level to make sure that we continue the work in getting these properties ready for development and moving forward as we continue to prosper out of this pandemic. So thank you for having me, Mayor. Thank you, Governor, for your leadership 
and for your investment in Sonia and look forward to working with you again in the years to come. Thank you. I would like to call up David Morgan from Team to please come to the podium. Thank you, Mayor. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit inspired. I see every one of these leaders behind me and I see a lot in the audience. I see residents, I see aldermen, alder women. I see uh, community partners from the nonprofit community as well as the other public and private sectors. And I, I can't help but comment on, you know, although there's been so much pain over the last 16 uh, months, it's taught um, so much about our ability to work together, come together and be stronger together. Um, and, and today, celebrating you know the passage of a state budget, as well as you know shining the light on Ansonia and the Valley, um, ju just like the pandemic uh, at times. And, and for those who know Team, we're, we're a nonprofit uh, health and human services provider, um, and there are many others in, in Ansonia and the Valley. We never went home. Uh, we were always in that front line, um, being part of that social economic fabric um, for individuals, families, households from all walks of life. And frankly, uh, the governor, I have to echo it, has always been a beacon of light and inspiration that allowed nonprofits like Team and so many others to move onward and up upward every 20 minutes, every day, every month of that very ugly and scary experience of this uh, coronavirus pandemic. And I think there's a lot learned from that when we celebrate the passage of this budget that sometimes things can, and we think about immediate response and immediate and long-term recovery, um, I, sometimes it can, things can feel insurmountable and then the humanity just bursts out when I see some individuals throughout this audience and many partners who we don't always agree on everything, but at the end of the day, that's where the good stuff comes out. Um, and it, uh, do we truly make a change for the benefit of others tomorrow? And I believe this state budget it does exactly that. And so on behalf of the nonprofit community, we are so grateful for the investment of this state budget. The investment in the nonprofit community is an investment in the pillars of the economic vitality of any community, any region, where you're talking about health and wellness, health care, child care, employability, youth development, all of those. So we, we stand um, with all of our legislators, our leaders, and the governor and applaud that. And I want to close with this, something um, that, Governor, I'd like to leave this with, with you on behalf of all of us at TEAM as well as those in Ansonia and the Valley. We're at the apex of, of some of the most difficult times of, of the pandemic. This would be late March, early April 2020. Um, and again, TEAM in the front line with food insecurity, child care, elderly, housing, etc. I got a note from a 10 year old uh, girl and uh, I'm gonna read it to you and I'm gonna leave it to you as a thank you. And she wrote, Dear David, and she's really addressing this to team. Um, she looked me up. Uh, thank you very much for helping humanity. Your work and dedication does not go unnoticed. I looked up the team logo and found team's main colors. So in return of your acts of kindness, I have made a bracelet inspired by team's colors. So Governor, I'm gonna leave you with that 10 year old girl's uh, note. Um, a copy of it, I'm keeping the original, uh, and, and a bracelet. I commissioned her to make a number of these br bracelets so I can continue to uh, express immense gratitude for getting us forward and onward and upward um, with this budget as a launching pad, so thank you. At this time, I would like to introduce our president of our Valley Chamber of Commerce, Bill Purcell, to come to the podium. Thank you, Mayor. Well, Governor, I, I want to welcome you on behalf of the Chamber uh, back to Ansonia and to our all America City. Uh, this has become a habit that we can all get pretty used to. Don't you think, Mayor? Sure. Legislative yeah. leaders, thank you so much. For coming you know, the last time I saw you, Governor, you were with your wife, Ann. You were on the first tee of the Travelers Championship. Bubba Watson and Jason Day had just teed off. My wife, Mary Jane, scurried to try to catch up to you and say hello, but you were lost in a sea of admirers. And I want to say, who would have thought that the next yep. day, Sunday, that the world would shine a spotlight on this great state of Connecticut? Uh, if you, if you um, weren't living in the cave, you know that it was the most dramatic finish. And it did shine a positive light. 10,000 fans. And the message across the country and the world is Connecticut is back. Connecticut is back. And it's because of your leadership in getting us through this pandemic. Thank you for that. You know, uh, to, uh, to you, Governor, and to our legislator, just before the holiday, we had a briefing. All the chamber presidents across the state joined with CBIA for a briefing on this legislative session. 
And there was an article that I'm going to leave a copy. Uh, CBIA said, budget legislative session set course for rebuilding Connecticut. So our hats off from the business community, uh, avoiding large scale taxes, uh, making investments, critical investments in municipal aid and education and our nonprofit providers like David Morgan and team and workforce development, reforming unemployment, preserving the rainy day fund. What a stroke of genius. So I congratulate our legislators uh, as well. But at the same time that we're focused on this short term uh, uh, and near term, we must also focus on long term strategic investments like this uh, that will position our communities uh, for long term growth by repurposing brownfield sites and bringing them back into productive use. Ambitious projects like this require vision, hard work, and perseverance. Mr. Mayor, I want to congratulate you for your vision. Rather than waiting for the private sector to come along, you have taken the bull by the horns and you have empowered your Cracker Jack team to seek whatever federal and state resources are necessary. And I want to acknowledge my friend Sheila O'Malley. Sheila, uh, this grant application was like a master's thesis at 110 pages, and I congratulate you for your persistence. And finally, Governor, I just want to acknowledge some of your leaders. Uh, we had our first breakfast. Uh, it was called Say Yes to Summer in Connecticut. And we had Christine Castingway, your Director of Tourism. We had Scott Dolch, the President of the Restaurant Association, and Ginny Kozlowski, the President of the Lodging Association. And the message was this, the tourism industry needs our support. The hospitality needs our support. Now more than ever, we encourage you to, to uh, patronize our local restaurants, our hospitals, and our tourism facilities across the, across the state. And finally, I want to say I had the pleasure of meeting your new Commissioner of Labor. We are joining on August 9th uh, with the Bridgeport Regional Business Council, the Department of Labor, and hosting a job fair. There are jobs and there are people that need those jobs. We want to bring them together, Governor, with your support, your commissioner's support. That will happen. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you. At this time, I would, it is an, my honor and privilege to introduce the governor of the great state of Connecticut and welcome him to the great city of Ansonia, Governor Ned Lamont. Thank you very much. Well, thanks, Mayor. Um, yeah, Bill, uh, Connecticut is back, but we still have a long way to go. Yes. We still have a long way to go. Uh, we're hitting the ground running coming out of COVID. Uh, thank God we're one of the states that are most likely to be vaccinated, least likely to be infected in the country. And people know that that allows us to hit the ground running. Mayor, as you said, recharging Antonio, recharging Connecticut. That's how we do it together. Um, that's how we were able to uh, make sure that all during the COVID, we kept our manufacturing open, we kept our construction open, worked our heart out to keep our schools open, make sure those kids uh, didn't lose a year and keep going from there. And that's why a lot of people take a second look at the great state of Connecticut. That's why for the first time in a decade, we have tens of thousands of families moving back to Connecticut, moving vans, turning around, coming back to Connecticut. Uh, hopefully coming right here to Ansonia because uh, as George and Kara said, um, we're never gonna get this economic renaissance unless all of our towns and cities, that starts right here in the Valley. This was the economic heart and engine of the state of Connecticut. And this is what this project is all about. How do we make our work sales more competitive? That's what we tried to do um, you know, with this budget. Uh, we tried to do a number of things. We tried to bring down the high cost of health care for people with a big expansion of the exchange. We tried to make work pay with a big um, tax cut for working families, earned income tax credit. We tried to make sure our retirees can afford to live and stay right here in the state of Connecticut. There's now a 70% tax cut on their pensions and annuities. These are different ways we work to make this place more affordable, where people can live and grow and start a business. When it comes to starting a business, um, we've got uh, a few hundred million dollars allocated to startups. And these are not big, fancy biopharma companies. These are companies right here on Main Street in Ansonia. And David Lehman and our team have a, um, 
a startup fund for distressed communities, a startup fund for communities up and down of the state. I want to make sure that you take advantage of that as well. So when we get this down, we have all the businesses ready to come in. Look, we're making this state competitive, we're making it affordable, making sure it happens, but it uh, doesn't just happen by chance. We've got some work to do. You know, one place where we're at a disadvantage is a brownfield. Let's face it, you're in Houston, the manufacturer, they'll, the mayor will say, why don't you just build out that cornfield there, no questions asked. Well, we don't have a lot of hundreds of acres of empty cornfields here in the state of uh, Connecticut, but we do have hundreds of acres of brownfield. And our job as a state is to make sure that we get these cleaned up, get this remediated, make sure that when a manufacturer or another business comes to Ansonia and looks around, they see here the opportunity that it is. Make sure they know this is a place that they can start their business, grow their business. Make sure they know they have the talent here. You know, there's a global search for talent. If you want to start a business, the first thing everybody asks me is about the talent. And I tell them, we got thousands of young people moving to the state of Connecticut, a big expansion of our community college program. We will train people for the jobs that are out there. I want to make sure that nobody is left behind. I want to make sure that in this time of uh, tight uh, employment markets right now, no kid loses that opportunity to step up. This is a remarkable time for them, a remarkable time for the state of Connecticut. And it starts with programs just like this, uh, Mayor. I really want to see this next time I'm here. Yes. Uh, what it looks like remediated, what it looks like with that new developer as we clip the ribbon and shake yeah, the hands more than and thousands well. of Absolutely. jobs right here in Minnesota. You're good. You're like the chorus. Jump in. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Little Chandy couldn't make it today from DECD, but we have Ned Moore from DECD. I want to recognize him in the crowd. Thank Ned, you. thanks for being Thank here. You. With that, I'd like to complete this uh, press conference and thank you all for coming. And let's move Ansonia forward. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, uh, you already have a developer for this property. Can you just explain a little bit what what is going to be here? So uh, I don't know if the director, economic development director, wants to speak on that yeah, a little thanks, bit further. Thanks, I Representative. Would you like to step forward? Right. I don't. I, I really don't want to go. To Come on. Okay. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, USA occupies 173,000 square feet of, of feral buildings on 35 Main Street, which is abuts this property, and one West Main Street. And they came to us about two years ago and said, we'd like another 100,000 square feet. We'd like to purchase the buildings we're leasing, and we'd like another 100,000 square feet. We'd like to bump out. And that's when Mayor Cassetti um, and, and uh, staff decided, look, let's Let's acquire this property. Let's demolish it. It's three and a half acres. It'd be a perfect site, new site for Rugpad USA. Um, and that's and that's when we began the journey, asking the governor, asking our uh, state rep and, and state senator um, for uh, for funding for demolition. And so the hope is that Rugpad expands. If not, I can tell you as the economic development director that there's about 20 other manufacturers looking for space. So we'll have no problem filling it once we can clean it and knock it down. Thank you. So I actually I have a question for you too. Yes, ma'am. If I may. One, sorry, Sheila. That's okay. Yes. One of the things that uh, people ask right away is, um, in, in the Derby, you have the state DEP going after a gas station owner for walking away from his tanks, allegedly, yep. underground. And then we have these browns fields all throughout Derby and Ansonia. What responsibility or what action did the city or any form of government take against the people who used to profit uh, off facilities like this? Right. I mean, it's, it's complicated. All these sites are complicated or they wouldn't be here today. Um, and so for this site in particular, we, for the city, we entered into a, a liability relief program, both on the state level and also talked to EPA about liability relief on the federal end of things. So we wanted to ensure that Ansonia was protected once acquiring this property. Um, I assume that down the road, these property owners who caused damage and could 
and contamination are going to be are going to be held accountable um, by the laws that govern the state and the and the country. Then just one other. You had six hundred thousand yes, dollars to take down a building right around the corner that's connected to this. Now a million for brownfield remediation. In terms of moving the ball towards the goal line of getting new life in here, how close are you? How much more do you need? Yeah, I think this million six seals the deal for this three and a half acres. Um, we did get uh, Representative Rochelle uh, and Senator Cabrera did get us uh, 500,000 in Urban Act funds. We got another 164,000 in federal funds. Um, and, and add that to this million, and we're, we are, uh, looks like we can complete the job for this amount. You're gonna hold me to that, right? Okay, so I, yeah, I think that, I think that. And what about in terms of uh, every municipality locally talks about, we're gonna get extra government cash uh, in terms of what's coming down from the federal government. Do you have any idea for, on the federal level what you'll be receiving to continue the cleanup of this entire area? Yeah, we, we did a study, uh, a, a master development plan, um, not your typical master development plan, but what it did was tell us all about the infrastructure. It told us about the buildings that currently exist on this piece and the 50 acres behind us known as Ansonia Copper Brass. And what that study said was a couple of things. One, you need to shore up that bridge or you're not getting anybody in there to develop anything. And the second thing was you need, and, and also uh, the state plan and the, the regional plan indicates you need a road, an access road into this site. So we're focusing on those areas for Ansonia Copper and Brass. We've got uh, hopefully 2.5 million coming from the federal government. I've made another ask of the state uh, to help us with matching funds for that as well. And I know, I know the governor and uh, Senator Cabrera and Rep. Rochelle are working on that. Um, and so, you know, we've got a lot of partners in play here and we're very appreciative of that. No, recognize we can't do it alone. Um, I, I, we're really, really very grateful to the governor for coming in today. I mean, any, any time the governor comes in, it's good for your city, right? It just, it's just helps us out tremendously. So we appreciate this and everything everybody's done for us. Thank you. Okay. Trying to sneak away. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Sheila. Like, over there, a year ago with similar sort of themes, brownfields and getting this put together. Um, can you reflect on the outlook from today, and this could be for anyone, the outlook from today versus a year ago, um, and what you think this means to the average person in Estonia? You know, what what kind of hope it might bring or not bring? So I, I think that for a long time there was stagnation, right? For a long time, uh, you know, there was no major steps being taken for economic revitalization, uh, and this started with a two hundred thousand dollars state investment and in uh, as a grant to do a study of the entire property, right? If, you know, is it fifty acres, sixty acres, twenty acres? It adds up. We have over 100 acres over here. And so getting that comprehensive analysis was the first step. And once we had that, you know, I was here a year ago talking about the domino tips, talking about the fact that you need to start somewhere and you need to take this piece by piece. Um, you know, we, we would be taking up half the state's resources if you try to demolish everything or media everything all at once, right? I mean, um, as far, you know, even, even have working piece up here. But what we can do is we can say, this is next. This is what we need next. This is the order of operations. And this is uh, you know, the investment in order to meet the moment with the uh, businesses that are interested in coming in, meet the moment with the next phase uh, in this. And so I think there's a tremendous amount of hope because we have not, um, in, in, in my memory, uh, which is, you know, I'm, I'm nearly 40, so for, for quite a long time, I, we've not seen the scale of investment in this area. And I, I think this is because there is a vision, there is a plan, and there is a willing partner in the state and in our governor who sees uh, you know, what we're sharing with him and believes in this area. Can I, can I just add to that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to add to that. You know, first of all, um, uh, in terms of the macro picture, you know, the, uh, Connecticut saw about a 6.1% growth rate in the first quarter of uh, 2021, and those, those numbers have just been released. Um, and uh, we are poised, nationally, 
It's happening across the across the country, of, of course. And we are ahead of so many other states in terms of dealing with this pandemic. Uh, but as I look at this great city of Insania, it's been a series of base hits. It's building by building, block by block, rebuilding this center city. Uh, the Farrell Corporation that once uh, dominated the site is in a magnificent new facility high on a hill here in Ensania. It's a world-class facility. It's a German company uh, supporting the plastics industry. They are still here and, and employed. Um, up and down Main Street, we've seen uh, a resurgence of retail activity and restaurants. It's become a restaurant mecca. It has become a restaurant destination. Um, and the city has planted the foundation set the stage for this kind of private investment. Uh, so as you take a walk, and we urge you uh, before you leave, to take a walk and look at the historic buildings that are still intact, that are now ground level retail, restaurants, residential up above. This is the key to successful revitalization in Connecticut cities today, bringing people back. The factories are gone. The old latex foam is now a target. On the other end, it was a bookends, uh, and in between is receiving life. And we're very excited for the future of this city. I'll just add to that. You know, I think one thing that's really, really important that needs to be emphasized is how important constant communication is with the local leaders and the state and those relationships. So very early on, before the session was started, uh, you know, the state delegation began uh, what were you know, very frequent phone calls with the mayor and Sheila Malik. And we began the conversations about what was needed. And it's really those partnerships beyond party affiliation, regardless of um, some areas where we may disagree, we agree on one thing. And that is that it is way past time that we start to clean up properties like this all across the valley. And in Estonia, we're going to bring back that economic development we all know that citizens in this in this town, and in the region deserve. And we're going to continue those partnerships. And we're going to continue speaking to each other. And we can keep about what needs to be done, working with the governor, working with the mayor our state delegation. We're hopeful that you know we set a good ground of a relationship to trust and, and moving forward to 